Using the box model properties, you also have the ability to ultimately control the location of your content in some respects. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about. Now remember, we have two elements here. We have a div element, and inside the div element, we have a paragraph element. Currently, the div element is being controlled by this container selector, and the paragraph element is being controlled by this container p descendant selector. So the first thing that I want to do is come over to the container selector. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that here in the selectors section. If you're having trouble selecting this, make sure you have the style source selected in the sources section. And what I'd like you to do is just change the width to something larger. Let's go ahead and change this to 600 pixels. Now, if you change this to 600 pixels, you'll notice that the paragraph element is still essentially stuck to the top left-hand corner of its container. It's pushed off a little bit because we have some padding values associated with it. But nevertheless, that's the way that content appears within an HTML document. It aligns to the top left-hand corner of its parent. Well, what if we wanted to center align this paragraph? Well, what we can do is come over to our descendant selector. And with it selected, we can control the margin values. Now, first of all, what we're seeing here is 36 pixels of vertical margin because we have that default 16 pixels of vertical margin. What if you don't want that default to be applied? Well, all you have to do is zero out the top and left. And here in the property section of the CSS designer, that simply means clicking and tabbing away from that zero, then it will be applied. You want to do that for the top and for the bottom. When you zero out default values, that's considered a CSS reset. Typically, when designers start working on layouts and web pages, they create a CSS file that will zero out all the default values that the browser typically applies to the page. That way, the designer has complete control over the appearance and location of the content. So now what we want to do is essentially figure out how we can make this paragraph appear in the center of this div. Now, you could do the math in your head. So we know that this container is 600 pixels. So if you cut it in half, that gives you 300 pixels. And if you cut that in half, that leaves you with 150 pixels. So you could add 150 pixels of margin on the left and 150 pixels of margin on the right. And that ultimately would get this content to appear in the center. But remember, if you have things like padding and borders, all that's going to factor into the overall width. So ideally, we want the browser to figure out the overall width of the container cut it in half, and then take half of that value and put it on the left and the right. And that can be achieved by setting the margin value on the left and on the right to auto. Now, as soon as you click auto on the left and on the right, you'll notice that that content, this paragraph element, is centered within the div. So let's go ahead and add some more box model properties to this element. So the first thing that we want to do is add a little bit of padding. And we want the padding to be applied on all four sides. So go ahead and click this little button here, which will link all of these values together. Go ahead and type in 20 pixels. And you've added 20 pixels of padding on the top, left, right, and bottom. Then what we want to do is deal with the border. So if you scroll down, you'll eventually see that category. The other option, of course, is to click it here to automatically be brought to that category. So what we want to do is we want to control the border width. And we want the border width to be 4 pixels. You'll notice here in the property section, we have several different options here. We have border top width, border right width, border bottom width, and border left width. That's if you want to control the border values independently on all four sides. If you want to control them all together, you just set the border width value. And what we're going to do is set this to pixels, and we're going to type in 4 pixels. And you'll notice if you type in 4 pixels here and tab away from it, 4 is added to each of the sides. Then if you want to choose a border style, you can do that. We want this to be solid, and we want that across all four sides. And of course, we want to choose a color. So up here towards the top, we can go ahead and select white. So now we've successfully added padding and border. So remember, the overall width of the paragraph element exceeds that of the width property, which is 325. To verify that, we can change the width value for our container selector, which is this div element. If we select the container selector and we change the width to the 325 that we know that the paragraph element is set to, 
you'll notice it's not large enough. And we're getting something called overflow. The child element is larger than the parent, so what you're looking at here is content that's being overflown from its parent. And you can control what you do with that content. You can hide it, you can make it scrollable. There's all sorts of options there as well. But of course, that's not what we want to do. If we want to be able to have this div element to contain all of this content, this paragraph element, and have equal spacing on all four sides, well then what we need to do is add the padding values that we have on the left and the right, which is 40 pixels, because there's 20 on the left and 20 on the right. And then the same thing for the border. Remember, we added four pixels of border, but we have four pixels on the left and four pixels on the right. So that gives us a total of an additional 48 pixels. So if we come over here and change the width value to 373, then our div element will contain the paragraph element nicely with equal spacing all the way around. So hopefully this begins to make a little bit more sense. It's very important to understand how width and height values are ultimately calculated. You can't ignore the box model properties. You have to include padding and border. And when you're dealing with margin, margin ultimately dictates how much space within the document that that element will take up.